Hey everyone, today we are doing our fourth and penultimate DC inspired makeup look and it's a little bit of a different one today because he's not the most well known character, um, he's not exactly the most loved character but he's one that I really really like and it is Blue Beetle. We're taking inspiration from this image for the makeup look today and we are going to be talking mostly about the Jamie Ray's incarnation of Blue Beetle and I'm going to be talking a little bit about why I really like him and why I chose to do this look. As always, if you're not interested in makeup-y stuff, that's fine, you can skip this video, we'll be back to science-y stuff soon and, you know, they're being uh, sort of dotted in between these makeup videos as well. But if you want to stay around for the nerdy comic book talk, you can do that as well. With Blue Beetle, we're going to be doing a kind of like bluish look today, lots of glitter, a little bit of silver in there as well. So basically black, blue, silver is our colour palette, we're going to be working with that. Um, for notes on the products I'm using, Everything's going to be listed in the description below, as always. I am trying to use as much cruelty-free and vegan makeup as possible, but if you want to hear a little bit more about that and what I'm doing, go check out the Starfire video where I explain it in a little bit more detail. Same with everything that I'm going to be doing to my skin and face. That's kind of like same stuff that I've been doing the whole way through, so go check out the Starfire video for that as well. With that said, I'm going to start by quickly priming my face. Oh, the other thing to note as well uh, before I get started is the nails I'm using for this look. They look a little bit purple on camera, but they're, they're amazing, these metallic nails. Uh, they're the Pluto set from Primark, uh, false nails, and oh my god, they're so pretty. They literally look like beetle wings, which is why I picked them. Um, like I say, they look purple on camera, but in real life they're a lot more blue. They also have tinges of yellow, green, they're just like proper holographic nails. They're so pretty. I thought they'd be perfect for this look because I want to get the whole like metallic-y thing going on. And now I'm just going to quickly fill in my brows as well before we properly start on the uh, eye makeup. Now I'm just going to take a flat brush and some of my NYX white eyeshadow base and I'm going to apply this all over my lid, um, all kind of like up on the brow bone as well and also start to bring it out to here as well because I'm going to try and like wing the whole eyeshadow and kind of bring it out quite far and try and elongate the eyes to try and get that like kind of beetly wing effect. Um, I have no idea if it's going to work but let's try it. So I'm going to pat this on with a flat brush and then use a makeup sponge to kind of blend it out a little bit and flatten it down and so I'm taking inspiration from the Jamie Ray's incarnation of Blue Beetle. There have been a couple of others but um, Jamie's actually the only one whose comics I've read which is why you know I've chosen to kind of focus mostly on him um, and the the outfit that I'm taking inspiration from is from the New 52 comics which was my first introduction to Blue Beetle. I do think he's a thoroughly underrated character and I do really like him. Um, what I think kind of like appeals to me the most about Blue Beetle is that when you look at a lot of superheroes they're all kind of like born into power or greatness in some way like not all of them but a lot of them like you know Wonder Woman is literally the daughter of a god Superman is literally an alien um Bruce Wayne and Oliver Queen are literally born into these like billionaire families Jamie is just a completely ordinary regular kid there's nothing like special or different about him. He's from like a very working class family. He's just very normal. And he doesn't like exactly choose to be a superhero. He just sort of falls into it. And then somehow decides to make the best of a weird situation. And I kind of love and respect that about him. Which I think is really cool. I think in the new 52 run, um, I really, really loved the first few issues where he was still kind of like coming to terms with his power and trying to figure out what to do about his family and stuff. And then when they had him run off and like he did some stuff with Green Lantern and I'll be honest I'm not a Green Lantern fan anyway. Mm, I don't like the comics, I don't like the film, I don't, I don't like anything Green Lantern to be honest. I just don't get him. I think he's... Bleh. But yeah, they, they had that little story arc and then they had some stuff in space and I just kind of like, yeah, I felt it ruined him a Bit, and I wasn't a huge fan of that story arc, the whole like fighting aliens in space thing. What I like um, about the Blue Beetle stories are where, you know, we see him as a real kind of like kid who's just sort of struggling to sort of find meaning in life and do something good and try and help people. And, you know, he is suddenly thrust into this strange world when this alien beetle essentially takes over his body. <laughs> 
they're the stories that I want to see more of and read more of. Um, and I can understand why it did get cancelled after they, you know, threw him into space. It was so weird. I'm using the white base because, again, I'm going to be using a lot of blue colours and I really want to help them pop by having this white underneath. We're using a lot of the same products and palettes as we have in the other few videos, so just going to show you to them now. I'm going to be using a whole range of shades of blues and stuff and just kind of mixing them and blending together. So I'm going to be using the NYX Ultimate Brights palette, the I Heart Revolution Makeup Hearts palette, and the Revolution Pro um, Regeneration Trends Mischief Mattes palette. Basically they've all got blues in, I'm going to be using a big kind of like mix of these to try and get something cool looking on the eye. I haven't thought it out in too much detail, but we're just kind of going to dive in and see what happens and have a play around. So I'm actually going to start with the NYX uh, Ultimate Brights palette, and I'm going to be starting with this shade of blue here, which I think is absolutely gorgeous, and I love it. So I'm going to take this shade of blue and like a tiny fluffy brush, and I'm just kind of going to start placing some colour um, kind of out here to try and make a wing sort of shape and kind of outline where I want the whole eyeshadow to go. So it's going to be really light and really uh, subtle for now, but it's just hopefully going to give me an uh, idea of where I want to place the colour going forward. It's a little, a little bit difficult to see on camera and a little bit subtle because um, I haven't applied much product at all but I think this is a really really good place to start. Next up I'm going to take one of my soft spectrum brushes and the colour Crusade from this Revolution Pro palette, this light blue here, and I'm going to start blending kind of like just above my crease and kind of bringing it up out into the wing and building up colour slowly. Just here and also making sure the edge is really, really soft and fluffy. Honestly, the hardest bit is trying to get these symmetrical. I'm so bad at that kind of stuff. That'll do for now. I can always come back and add more in and like build it up as we go along, you know? Now with the fluffy Eco Tools brush, I'm going to take this uh, dark blue shade from the Mermaid, yeah, Mermaid's Heart palette. Um, so I'm going to take this one, I'm going to start applying it in the corner of my eye here, blending it up into the little flick a little bit, but also just like focusing mostly on the corner of the eyelid. I'm going to take some of the shade of the other blue that's in the palette and just go under my eye and so we blend this up to join the flick. Now back to the NYX palette, I'm going to take that light blue again and pop this all over the rest of the lid that's left, and then just use this to start blending all the colours together. I think that's going to do for now, but we can come back and add a little bit more colour in places or blend bits out a little bit more as we go along if we want. Um, I'm going to go in with a little bit of black eyeliner now. I say a little bit, I'm going to do quite a thick winged black eyeliner if I can. Uh, for this, I'm using the Revolution, um, actually I don't know if this has a name, but it's a Revolution Black Liquid Liner. Uh, basically acts just like a felt pen. I've been looking for something like this for so long. It is vegan and cruelty free, which is great, um, and it's just as good as my old favourite L'Oreal Super Slim Liner. Actually, it's probably better because it's a bit darker, a bit more pigmented, um, but doesn't hurt animals, which I'm a huge fan of. So I'm just going to start by lining... Uh, really really close to my lash line on both the eyes. I want this to be really bold and really thick so I'm kind of hoping I don't ruin everything else I've done so far. Okay that's the line done, now I need to kind of add a flick. Next up I'm going to take a teeny tiny flat brush 
and Barry M's holographic eyeshadow topper in Asteroid. This one's really gorgeous. So I love these holographic um, sort of eyeshadows they've got. They're so, so pretty. Um, and they like color shift and they're really bright and really sparkly and they're really, really nice and fun to use. And um, this one is a kind of bluish, greenish with a slight purple tint to it. Really, really pretty. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this on my tiny little flat brush. I'm gonna start putting it on my eyelid like working from the inner corner and then blending out so it doesn't cover the entire lid so there's going to be like none over here but lots here does that make sense i'm placing this above the eyeliner as well <laughs> seriously look how pretty this is i love it so much okay i'm now very quickly going to pop a coat of foundation all over my face Alrighty, quick cut of mascara on the eyes as well now. I was gonna add more silver to this look, but I actually don't think it needs it. I think the whole like metallic blue and black kind of works well together, it's fine. What I'm gonna do at this point is go back and try and add in a little more uh, blue to uh, kind of like above the crease. I wanna make it just a little bit more pigmented. So going back to Blue Beetle, uh, one of the kind of incarnations of Blue Beetle that I really liked, or one of the appearances that I really liked, was in the Injustice 2 game. I thought including Blue Beetle and Firestorm actually was a really nice touch that they didn't really have to do because they weren't exactly central to the story, they hadn't been in the last game, but it was really really fun to see them. And it was really nice to see them, um, you know, because they are just kids. And they felt really kind of out of their depth in the Justice League and they were like, oh god. But it was really nice to see them kind of come to terms with that and dealing with it and like overcoming those worries and ending up in a really good place and just, yeah, being really kind of like productive little heroes. It was, it was nice. It was really, really good. Um, and also they're really fun to play as. Well, Blue Beetle in particular. I don't really like playing as Firestorm, but I do love playing as Blue Beetle. He's a really, really fun one. And now I do just want to darken this uh, in a corner a little bit more. I do think it's a shame that characters like Blue Beetle aren't kind of more well known. I do think he's very underrated and he's very cool. And also like Jamie, he's um, what is he? He's like Hispanic or something? I don't know, I'm not very good at using the right word for like different nationalities and ethnicities and stuff I don't know but what I really like is that he's just from this very kind of working class normal family um like I said before and I think a lot of people would kind of get a kick out of um seeing someone more like them as a superhero I mean I'm I'm not I'm not Spanish or Hispanic or whatever um but I am I am from a pretty normal working class family and it's nice to see people like me doing cool things like that like I yeah it would have been great to see someone like that for me as a kid that's what I'm trying to say words aren't coming out very well. The thing is like, honestly when I was a kid, I thought I would just grow up to work in a shop. Like that's the most I ever saw myself doing. Because when I did look at all the people who like succeeded and did well, it was all the ones who came from families with money and like, you know, they could afford to send their kids to this posh school or to this after school club or like, you know, their parents could drive them around to here and here and they could go and do these things and whatever. Um, I always thought that it was people with a bit more privilege that got to do the cool stuff in life. Um, I could never imagine myself doing a job like this. And um, yeah, sometimes there are moments now where I just kind of sit back and look around and I'm like, damn, I am so grateful for this life. Like I'm 25 and I have everything I could ever dream of. Like I've got this beautiful flat and I know it's like, a tiny little thing, well it's not actually tiny, no it's two bedrooms, it's amazing, like but I know it's not anything special by some people's standards but this is better than I could ever have dreamed of, like I live in London, I have the most amazing boyfriend, I have a dog, like oh, like I have a job which I love doing that lets me work from home and at my own schedule and yeah, I just, I never imagined this for myself and it's, it's amazing, like sometimes I sit back and look and I'm just like what more could I want? I, I'm I'm so happy. Anyway, the point is, I never imagined a life for this like this for myself as a kid. 
I thought I'd be stuck in Peniston, working in a shop, probably pretty unhappy, just kind of like living day by day, you know, as I saw so many people doing. That's what I thought my life was going to be. And I think if I'd had kind of characters like maybe Billy Beetle, who were just ordinary kids who made the most of something completely extraordinary, maybe if I had more people like that to look up to, then I know I'd have had not necessarily more ambition, but I'd have felt a little bit more hopeful. I wouldn't have felt quite so lost and hopeless and like my dreams were just dreams, you know? I mean, that said, like people like characters like Blue Beetle were around, but they were very different at the time and I wasn't into comic books at the time, so probably my fault. Anyway, point is Blue Beetle's really cool. That's what I'm trying to say and I'm rambling a lot. Let's do some stuff on my cheeks. Oh, tell you what, I got a really cute little little highlighting palette from uh, Primark the other day. It was like three quid, it was really cute. Um, but they've got this really cute little pink shimmery shade here that I think would be really cute for Blue Beetle. Let's take a nice fluffy brush. Just apply a little bit of this to my cheeks. Oh, you can't even see it on camera. There's quite a lot of pigment here, more than I expected. Damn. It's really pretty as well. And now, to finish this off, Oh, a lip product that I've been wanting to use for so long. This is so pretty. This is the I Heart Revolution Galaxy Liquid like Lipstick Lip Gloss Lip Stuff. It's blue and it's glittery and it's sparkly and it is so pretty and I cannot wait to use this. But first, um, I'm going to use a little bit of this. It's just a Barry M uh, sort of, it's called Let's Be Clear Lip Fixer. It's a completely see-through transparent like lip liner basically and it just stops your uh, liquid lip products from kind of like fraying at the edges if that makes sense. The older I get, the more like wrinkles and lines I'm seeing, so it's quite subtle, but it is becoming more noticeable with my lipstick, so I have to use things like this now. It's completely transparent, like no one can see you're wearing it or anything, um, you can't even see that it's on there. It just stops your lip product from running or fraying or whatever, it gives you a nice clean edge, it's great. This is the prettiest colour, look at it, oh my god. I wish it was more acceptable to wear like blue lip products in public, because I would wear this every day, it is that pretty. Also, these smell really good. There you go, I'm pretty happy with that. You know what, I am gonna say this Blue Beetle look is done. I'm actually really, really happy with this and I love this, I think it's so much fun. This might be my favorite look that I've done so far. I really, really like this and I think I'd actually go out and wear this in public as well. Look at it, it's so cute. Oh, I don't wanna take this off, ever. I really like this one, am I silly? I'm probably silly, aren't I? Also, I didn't think blue was really my colour, but I don't know, maybe I could get away with it. What do you think? I know it's tough because my skin has quite like yellowish undertones, so I never thought I could get away with colours like blue and stuff. So I've always tried to stick with like, you know, reds and oranges and blacks, you know, but I, I kind of don't mind this. I think it's really cute. Also, it's just so much fun. Look at it. Don't mind me just staring at myself in the camera screen, you know. <laughs> This is really, really fun. I like this look a lot. I think, yeah, I think it's my favourite one so far. And like I say, I think Blue Beetle is such an underrated character and I thoroughly recommend if you've never heard of him or don't know him, go check him out, go read some comics. The first little story arc in the New 52 comics is quite fun if you want a nice little introduction to him and a nice little story there. Definitely, definitely go read that one. But let me know down in the comments what you thought of this makeup look, what you think of Blue Beetle, let me know what you think of DC Comics in general, and have a guess who you think the last character we are going to be doing a makeup inspired look by is going to be uh, words. Let me know who you think the next one's going to be. It's the last one, it's a good one. Again, it's quite a challenging one, but I'm really looking forward to it, and I think if I can pull it off, it's going to be really, really cute. But I love this! Oh my god! Oh, I'm so happy! Damn, sorry, I feel like a child at Christmas. I can't believe I did this. Anyway, thank you for watching today. It's nearly Halloween, so have a good spooktober and candy night. Is that what Americans say? I don't, I don't know. We don't really do Halloween here, like a little bit, but not really. Um, I'm, I'm gonna shut up now. Bye guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone who's supporting my channel this month, especially everyone supporting me on Patreon, including Gambit and his chauffeur, Day Sean, Mark Darner, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Jaylee Moore, Religions BS, Sir Michael Moore, Christian Opitz, Sage Villarreal, Greg Ladd, and Spencer Young. 
Your all seriously amazing and I can't thank you enough. Also check out everyone else mentioned on the end screen here and down in the description below. And if you got a little bit of spare time and you want to check out my merch store then uh, you know you can you can do that if you want. No pressure.